Steel for one player, and it looks like Amber Steel Song yep. as well. So, going to be really, really exciting. I think that uh, Valerio there is on Emerald Steel to the left, and uh, Jake is actually on Amber Steel Songs, not Emerald Steel. So, uh, I'm looking at their hand right now. I can see an Ariel in there. There's a Cinderella Stout Hearted as well. Looks like a pretty aggressive mulligan. Is, is that? Is that's not seven cards, is it, Baker? Is it, it the full is, seven? It looks like the full seven. It the way he's moving looks at the moment hey if you haven't found the pieces that you need then be aggressive find what you need but yeah super excited to move into round three again if you're just joining us um welcome to disney lorcana challenge in bologna italy uh, we've got nine rounds today two game format and tomorrow our top 64 players will move into top cut where it will become a best of three tournament and so many great prizes to play for i'm happy to be here oh absolutely and of course being in italy good opportunity to sample the local food. I'm going to be looking to get some lasagna. I can't at lunch wait, time, mate. Right? That's what I'm looking for. Valerio with a one cost card in hand, a Diablo, a yep. couple of Diablos, and I think a Hidden Cove as well. Hidden Cove location, not something you always see on Emerald Steel players, but a very strong way potentially for Valerio to dodge, grab your swords, uh -huh. cards like Diablo. Rapunzel into the inkwell, Cinderella on turn one. What an opener, Baker. Yeah, great opener, the Cinderella. Ballroom sensation has Singer 3, meaning it will be able to very easily sing a lot of very powerful songs that I imagine Jake is running, the likes of Let the Storm Rage On, Strength for a Raging Fire, Maybe playing something like the Bear Necessities in there. So, yeah, a really nice opening from Steel Song. And we see him eyeing up this Diablo. He's got two in hand, but no shift target for it yet, unfortunately. Yeah, and it, Valerio is going to be interested in the option of not even playing anything here. Mm -hmm. Goes for the Hidden Cove. Yep, that makes and sense. I, I like this. If you play the one cost Diablo, you're really just giving Jake a free opportunity to sing, for example, Let the Storm Rage On. Absolutely. Move your Diablo, and Jake would get to draw a card. That's the power of Cinderella when going first. Robin Hood into the Inkwell, and two ink is going to be spent on a Ursula Vanessa, a pretty similar card to Cinderella. Mm -hmm. Another great singer with the singer four keyword, and she can very easily, again, everything that Cinderella can sing, she can sing it too, but she can also sing very powerful cards like, and then along came Zeus. So really nice singer character to have down. Yep, Diablo into the inkwell for Valerio. And in comes Ursula Deceiver, and that is going to hit. There's a couple of aerials, Strength of a Raging Fire and Grab Your Swords. Which one are you going for here, Baker? Grab Your Swords or Strength? It's is super interesting because obviously this Grab Your Swords can come out later and completely wipe Valerio's field, which is going to be the decision. He is going to think ahead. Obviously, Strength of a Raging Fire is the more immediate problem, yep. but with just Ursa Deceiver on board, I very much doubt Jake is going to be interested in taking that out. But it, I, I do think it's not necessarily a clean-cut decision. Which one you go for here? Do you go for a media or long term? But yeah, chooses to get rid of that. Grab your swords. Yeah, I think I probably would have done the same. Of course, grab your swords uninkable, whereas the strength can go into the inkwell. So Jake can now keep both of those Cinderellas. We see, do you see the golden harp and a Lawrence in there? No songs though found off aerial for Jake, which is not what you're looking for. Baker, let's not forget Jake Mulligan seven cards, and they found. A Cinderella into Ursa uh, Vanessa into Aerial Open, and that's pretty impressive. Yeah, that is what you want to see if you are the Steel Song player. Just tons of singer. We now have a singer three, four, and five carries wow. are on the board. Uh, the whole monopoly up in here. We're going to get a couple of quests off because this Ursa uh, Deceiver only having one strength. So pretty safe questing turn there from Jake. Yeah, the third Diablo into the Inkwell. That Inkwell is filled with Diablos as Ursula, Deceiver of all. We've got Ursula Vanessa on one side for Amber and the legendary Ursula, Deceiver of all for Valerio on Emerald Steel. Yeah, two Ursulas on board just pointing at each other, yeah. but this Deceiver of all... And there's the Deceiver as well. Three different Ursulas on the board right now. It is an Ursula party, but that Deceiver of all threatening to potentially double sing a song on a next turn, as that is the ability. If she sings a song, then you just get the exact same effect for free, and then it goes to the bottom of your deck but another aerial coming down for jake did he get a hit this time it's a whole new world ah okay well that's a whole new world is definitely a key card for amber steel songs in this matchup because it's going to allow jake to replenish their hand very quickly and there is the zeus yep. ursula vanessa singing it as you mentioned cinderella into the inkwell ariel gonna sing a whole new world <sighs> and that means seven new cards for each player which if you're emerald steel you do not want to see your opponent draw seven brand new cards no that's absolutely right even though we haven't seen the bucky come down 
hand to it at all, but no, that Valerio definitely would rather. Jake had a less impressive hand size, but a whole new world is going to completely refresh both players to seven new cards. And Jake's got this fantastic field. He can uh, he can quest potentially because this Ursula only straight uh, challenges for one, and he's just always going to have singers. So this is a really nice place to, for Jake to be in. That hidden cove still on the board, but doesn't have any passive law. Yeah, and Jake has, if I'm not mistaken, drawn into another copy of a whole new world as well. So this is really the game plan for Amber Steel in this matchup. If you're Emerald Steel, after a whole new world, the card you're really hoping to have access to is another copy of Ursula Deceiver, because you can just check what Jake's got in hand. Very likely you're going to hit a song. I'm not sure if they've quite got access to it just now, though. It doesn't seem like they do. No, and they threw away a lot of pretty good cards as well. I think double strength for a Raging Fire and one copy of that Robin Hood. So a pretty nice hit from the whole new world. Valerio weighing up his options here. And what's the strategy if you're Emerald Steel? Um, is there, what are the odds do we think the Emerald Steel player is playing Grab Your Swords of their own? Good question. If they are, probably only a copy or two. Yep. We do see Ursula... Deceiver have all come down. And this makes sense to me. You've got to try and start controlling the board. Mm -hmm. If this Ursula can stick around and sing something, that's going to be able to clear multiple threats at once, potentially. Double strength with three characters on board would be nice. Absolutely. There is another Diablo in hand for Valeria, the one cost. They could play it. I personally am quite excited at the potential of seeing four cards in the inkwell and them all being Diablo. Are oh, we going to see it? Four one-drop Diablos oh, in Oh, my inkwell. goodness. I've never seen that in my life. It has happened. Ursula Deceiver always going to move into that hidden cove, which is super good, giving an extra one strength and one willpower to any character there. And that does change maths quite a lot, um, meaning that certain cards won't be able to take out this Ursula. Um, strength of Raging Fire is doing the business just enough, uh, but still, we might as well put her in the cove. There will be times where that maths uh, will absolutely matter. Yeah, Ursula Deceiver of all now with essentially three strength and four willpower while that hidden cove is on the board. But of course, if it's removed, then Ursula will go back to her normal stats of two strength and three willpower. Play is on Jake, currently at four ink baker. And quite a lot of five cost cards usually you could see in these decks, things like the Queen. Could also see a, sh a Cinderella shift stout-hearted potentially on turn five as well. We know that Jake is playing that golden harp because we saw it off yep. the aerial top not too long ago. Um, what do we do? We think flutes are going to be in this deck. That's a good question. Flutes we did see a lot at the start of the meta when Ruby Sapphire was around. Sometimes with these steel songs based off of Fort Worth, you do see flutes, but not necessarily four copies, maybe just two or three. Yeah, no. But it's possible Jake could have removed them entirely. I don't think we've seen any yet. It looks like Let the Storm Rage On is what Jake is leaning towards. Of course, could sing that with any of their characters, and that is also going to draw them a card baker. And this is a play that I, I like to see. Jake is not quite sure what to do, but decides to start off the turn by drawing a card, sinking two damage counters into Ursula Deceiver of All. And by drawing a card, this just means that Jake now has that one extra card in hand and a little bit more knowledge on the options available to them. Yeah, especially if your only alternative is quite a passive turn and you want to put on the gas and start racing to game. So yeah, I, I can absolutely respect it. Are we going to see some questing here? No, we're going to see the Ursula Vanessa singing the bare necessities and there are a lot of songs, or a lot, a lot of non-character cards, should I say. I do think that is the Bucky on yeah, the far left. Bucky and Jafar Dreadnought, three copies of Let the Storm Rage On and a single strength of the Raging Fire, which is... I think that's his third goes. copy. I think that's his third copy gone as well because discarded two off of the whole okay. new world. So we've lost three Storm Rage... Well, no, it's not lost, but he's holding three Storm Rage on, but the strengths are starting to run out. But just that information is really key for, for Jake to decide how he wants to make this play. Going to uh, um, ink Ursula Vanessa. Yeah, so five inks still available. There's a couple of Smees. There's a Lawrence in there. There is a Robin Hood. And one thing that, yeah, there it is, the Lawrence and the Smee hitting the board. This is something that Amber Steel can do so well is after singing Whole New World, you've got a full hand and you can put down cards with big stats and questing power like Smee and Lawrence. Very, very difficult to mm -hmm. remove. Jake's questing power now is really, really high. For sure. Yeah, no, this is, a, this is exactly what Steel Song wants to do, really. Just get out these singers so that you constantly have easy ways to remove the opposing characters and control the board and just be able to keep questing playing a whole new world to refresh your hand and just keep having the questions and see how long it takes your opponent to run out of answers yeah that ursula 
Deceiver of All is still remaining on the board. So it is going to potentially be able to sing next turn, but it is that strength of a Raging Fire you mentioned, Baker. Being able to deal more than two damage in a single swoop could have been really, really big for Valerio. But just two damage from the Let the Storm Rage On. It's going to be able to remove Cinderella. Yep. It's going to be able to damage some other things, but it's not going to be able to remove anything else, just one character. And at this moment in time, Valerio needs to be removing as many characters as possible this turn. You're right. Do we have another captain on board for the sake of the Mr. Smith? Oh, he's, uh, yeah, he's still ready at the moment. So, yeah, I mean, like, you could storm the Smee and then it's going to be banished at the end of the turn, but that doesn't sound like a great value. Is going to opt to put some damage on this Ursula Vanessa. Yep, it looks like. Uh, so, Vera just comes off this properly, does the two damage onto Vanessa, draws a card, and then is going to repeat the ability with Ursula. Uh, it goes into the discard, then onto the bottom of the deck. Yep. And That's Valera good. is going to draw another card. And it was the Ursula Vanessa selected both times by Let the Storm Rage On. Valera, a stickler for the rules, Baker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very proper. I respect it, get into a habit of doing things the right way. We finally see that bucket. It's, it's his final swan song. And I feel like he's not been hitting the field in these Emerald Steel matchups. I, I missed round one, but I don't think there was a, there was a bucky that came down then. So it's his final swan song, but he may not even make much of a difference at this point. We'll see. Valerio is going to challenge into that Cinderella Ballroom Sensation, doing one damage to Ursula Deceiver. I think he's also moved it into the cove, yeah. I believe. Yes, yeah, that Valerio one. Valerio moves that the Ursula Deceiver into the cove, which turns its stats into a two-strength character yeah. with four willpower, which allowed Valerio to remove that Cinderella. Really like the decision-making to then prioritize the Ursula Vanessa and then use the Ursula Deceiver to remove the Cinderella. At this point, Valerio is pretty worried about the board state Jake is developing and all that questing power. They just need to remove as much questing power as possible. Yeah, for sure. And like, you notice Jake didn't extend with that Smee and Lawrence until he'd looked at his opponent's hand, courtesy of Bear Necessities, to check for things like grab swords or any sort of like big combo that Valerio could punish an extension like this. But no, Jake feeling quite happy to do so. He's going to ink that Bucky um, and play down the Aladdin Heroic Outlaw, which is a bit of stats on the board, but he's got some catching up to do. But Jake only at six, it's not over by any means. If Jake had flute on the board and was doing that every turn this could get out of hand but I still think Valerio could potentially bring this back yeah Jake still with that whole new world available might be wanting to just empty the hand as much as possible Rapunzel could be an interesting card draw option as well can really see the power of amber steel songs here so much card draw potential but then being able to replenish your hand and go really wide with the Smee and Lawrence is something that we saw Frank Carsten do really well in Lil with yeah, the Piglet yeah. Blue Pirate Captain in the Smees. Yeah, good point. This Lawrence has uh, been sat in <laughs> people's... There's loads of Lawrences. They've been, I think they've been sat in shelves for a while or in people's bulk boxes, but suddenly they've gotten very... Uh, people are appreciating Lawrence now, questing for two, and if you've got no damage on him, then he's got four strength. So really nice body, nice beat stick, nice uh, aggressive questing option and a nice check for the Flynn Rider from those Ruby decks. This is how to play Amber Steel Songs. Jake really showing us how it's done, utilizing Whole New World perfectly. Again, does come down to Valerio. After that Whole New World, the, the main card as an Emerald Steel play you're hoping to find, in my experience, is that Ursula Deceiver. Because uh -huh. Valerio then could look at Jake's hand, discard that Whole New World, and then Jake would have to take a slightly different game plan, which is where cards like Rapunzel can come through. Ariel going to sing Let the Storm Rage On. Ursula Deceiver of All removed from the board. Yep, no, really nice play there. And as you say, Jake just has such a such a big wide field that Valerio can't spend time questing or anything else. He needs to answer these characters. So, um, yeah, it's a shame because Valerio got that two-drop Ursa Deceiver that you were just talking about, about down on turn two. Did get a hit, but has never been able to snipe away these copies of a whole new world, which really is what is allowing Jake to extend this month. She sings the bare necessities. Mm, oh, there is a non-character card. I thought it was all characters for a moment, but we're going to move the smash. And Jake's just going to take a quick look at the hand. We see a Bucky and Ursula the Sea Revol, a Diablo, a Robin Hood, and two copies of that Cricky, who I'm a big fan of with that three law. The ability is very good, yeah. giving plus three to all your characters. But it's just a nice bit of reach that the Emeralds decks, in my opinion, kind of lack. They don't have many high questing characters, so I really like this addition. Yeah, I think it's the kind of card which we can expect to see more of in Shimmering Skies yeah. once Bucky's gone, because it doesn't have the Floodborne tag, yep. which is maybe why we don't see it as much. Lawrence is going to remove Ursula Deceiver from the board instead of questing. Pretty interesting decision there. Mm. And uh, Jake just still at six lore. Really, really interesting turn there. 
Yeah, no, he's being quite reserved. Um, yeah, just going up one bit at a time. Again, he extended with an extra Smee and Lawrence previous turn. But yeah, just small gains here. The Aladdin Heroic Outlaw is challenging into the aerial. It's obviously at that hidden cove, so it has four strength and four willpower. I think removing these singers is absolutely what Valerio needs to do. He can't allow Jake to keep playing Free Whole New World and then extend even more. He needs to say, if you're going to sing these songs, I want it to cost you ink. Yeah, currently Jake on six law, Valerio on zero. Robin Hood, Robin Hood. Running through the forest. That Hidden Cove still remaining on the board for Valeria as an option. Of course, Jake could start challenging into it. Yeah, he's ignored it up till now. But also might just want to quest. But all three characters into the cove now. That is going to protect them from Grab Your Swords, which is, of course, a pretty big threat for sure. in an Amber Steel Songs deck. Yeah, no, Grab Your Swords at this point, removing these Robin Hoods, I think might just be a bit too much, especially since a Bucky Squirrel Squeak Tutor is finally making his way onto the board. For now, two cost inkable, one, one, quest for one, ward, and whenever you play a Floodborne, your opponent discards a card. If you're newer to Lorcana, don't get used to Bucky. He is changing very, very soon. This will be the last European tournament where he is uh, legal in his current unerratted state. But this is the swan song. A lot of players wanting to send Bucky, Bucky off with a big farewell, but is it too late? Has this come down too late in the game for it to really make a difference at this point, Joe? Yeah, I think the main thing Emerald Steel needs to try and do is stop that initial whole new world, yep. because Jake's now in a position where they've got so many cards on the board, so much questing power, but Valerio is definitely still trying to control this board. The longer it goes on, the more you know, the, the Emerald Steel player might be able to get their way back into it, but it does look like a scary board it is. to deal with that Jake has developed here. Yeah, for sure. No. Also, the ink advantage, I think, is in Jake's favor as well. They've been able to ink each turn knowing they can sing Whole New World. Valerio hasn't had such a luxury. Another Let the Storm Rage On sung by Ariel, removing the Aladdin, and Jake draws a card. Yeah, this Let the Storm Rage On is one of, been one of the best cards in the game since it's released. Three cost uninkable, deal two damage, and draw a card and of course because as it's a song we can absolutely take advantage of things like Ariel, Boring Sensation, Cinderella. So yeah this still song kind of putting in the business. I was talking with Ross before you came back to join us Joe and he was saying he wants to see Steel Song do very well today so maybe Jake Quincy is the one to do it. He inks that poo, uh, piglet Pooh Pirate Captain who I know Frank Carsten is a big fan of and play, played that to success in DLC Lil. Yeah, really nice bit of synergy. The fact that it is a captain, of course, gives your Mr. Smee a chance to not damage uh -huh. himself at the end of the turn, which can be great. Smee also with synergy with Rapunzel in this deck, which is a really nice little combo. Mm. You can use Rapunzel to heal the Smee and draw a couple of cards for good measure. I think Smee may be one of the best two drops in the game. Yeah. I mean... I would say maybe the best. Yeah, I think Ursa Deceive for Smee. Yeah, like, is it, I think is, is Bucky's it... in the conversation as well. But yeah, and it's Just the raw state. stats of Mr. Smee, while its yeah. ability is a downside, the fact it's a 3-3, three, three, which quest for two, it's it's really difficult to leave out of any steel deck. Yeah, I mean, and, but the downside isn't even that bad. Like no. you say, there's sometimes synergy. Um, you utilized uh, the bell from Amethyst to remove that damage. As you just mentioned, Big uh, quest. Rapunzel can do that. So, yes, me a super strong card. And, yeah, we're up to 14 now. This is it. This is the gas. Valerio needs to answer this board right now. Yeah, Jake has just been biding their time, waiting patiently for the right moment. And it's something we often see when you start questing with one character, you quest with everything. Because now, as we see a Padita in the deck for Jake as well, that is something I'm really excited to see. I would imagine there's only one or two copies. Bare Necessities yep. is going to allow Jake to see the hand of Valeria. While it can't discard, it's still nice information. Mm -hmm. A piglet comes through for even more questing potential. That's what I mean. Just this information just tells you, can I extend this much and, and just go speed. for it? He's doing it. What a board from Jake. And I don't think there's much that Valerio can do to answer this. Again, maybe he is, if he is running the grab swords, can we get it off the top? I don't know how much it changes things, but it would change a little. An enchanted Diablo. Not what you want to see at this no. moment in time. You wouldn't mind it in your booster. Yep, yep, yep. Probably not off the top of the deck, staring down the board that Jake has developed here. Now, interesting for Valerio, how do they play it from here? Because let's be honest, they can't stop Jake getting there. Is there any extra information they can gain? Do they give up any more information at this point? Like, if they were to the cricky 
That gives Jake some extra information going into the second game. They decide to call it there. Jake putting on a fantastic show of the potential that Amber Steel Songs has. Yeah, for sure. And I actually think you just made a really fantastic... Aggressive mulligan in game one with seven cards. And I want to point out what Jake is doing here. They are waiting to see how many cards Valerio is going to mulligan. At yep. the highest level, you need to take every advantage you can. The player going first, mulligans first. And now Jake sees that little bit of extra information and now starts to reveal... They don't want to put any cards down on the table to give Valerio any information and they wait. If you see the Steel Emerald player mulligan one card, you're like, okay, I need a very, very good yep. hand here. Yep. Yep. Whereas yep. Valerio mulliganing six, Jake's gonna know, okay, they didn't find maybe the Bucky in the opening hand, they certainly didn't find Bucky Diablo shift perfect line. Mm -hmm. So maybe I can be a little bit more conservative. Maybe it doesn't change anything, Baker, but it's absolutely worth taking every advantage you're entitled to do so. No, I absolutely rate you for emphasizing this, to be honest, because it is something that myself included, a lot of Lorcan players don't take advantage of. And you are absolutely right just knowing that that was because that was a six car bulligan yep. i believe from valerio so that says to jake okay maybe i can be greedier here but exactly as you just said if it had just been one maybe you then need to think okay you probably have everything you need so no i really rate you for bringing that up joe and players at home i think you should absolutely take that advice and start getting used to hey if you're going second yep. you can wait for them to mulligan first use it use the powers at your disposal love to see the sportsmanship from both players the other thing about the Mulligan as we see another Diablo into the Inkwell, but this time <laughs> it finally hits the field, Joe. There you go. Marble whole new world is not what you want to see if you Jake necessarily. Now I will say it could be a good thing that you've got two whole new worlds because that Ursula Deceiver, it can discard one, but you're gonna need another to discard both. So maybe that is part of Jake's game plan. I didn't catch the exact mulligan there. But it could prove to be better than so, it first appears. Yeah, so we had two whole new worlds. We have a Borum Sensation Cinderella. We had an Ariel. We have a Lawrence. That's about as much of it I can, as yep. I can remember. Um, so yeah, it, it was and a Rapunzel as well. So it was actually a pretty good hand. And yeah, as, as you just said, that second whole new world may be game saving for Jake because we do see that Valerio has this Ursa Deceiver. So definitely going to be a difference maker. We ink the Rapunzel. Down comes the Borum Sensation Cinderella. And we pass over to Valerio. Yeah, and it's an interesting decision to go for the Cinderella and not go for the Robin Hood on turn one. Both could have been played, but Jake also deciding to ink Rapunzel. Some players might have, if they decided to play the Cinderella, ink the Robin Hood, but Jake clearly has plans for that. Now, the Ursula Deceiver does come through. Bare necessities as well as whole new world an option. And look at that. Because of that double whole new world for Jake, Valeria decides, do you know what? There's no point in me discarding just one of them. Yep. So instead, I'm going to discard your bare necessities, which might have been going into the ink well. Yeah, no, I think that's a pretty good decision. And yeah, now, I mean, you're only ever going to get what well, you sort of one whole new world in your hand from playing it because otherwise you just discard the other one. So yeah, super interesting play. Uh, Jake, I'm not sure if he had any two drops other than that bare necessities. So I'm not sure how much he can pressure here. He'll definitely look to ink. Robin Hood could still be an interesting option because yep. it's threatening a shift. Yeah, you're right. If they don't have it you're at right. this moment in time, they could still top deck it and then get the whole new world through. For Jake now, they're looking to get a five singer on the board in yep. the form of either a five cost character or an aerial to get that whole new world through as quickly as possible. So it is Robin Hood on the board. Cinderella not going to quest either, but remain ready. But there is the second <laughs> Ursula Deceiver off the top. And I wonder now if Valerio is wishing that they took that whole new world off the first, but they didn't know this Ursula yeah. Deceiver was waiting on the top of the deck for them. Yeah, for sure. And of course, he knows that this aerial spectacular singer can probably come down now on turn three. Maybe he would have found another one, but yeah, he wasn't to know he was going to get an Ursula Deceiver. I still think it was a good decision that he made. We're going to ink Lawrence. Look at the top four. We see a Zeus already. Uh, I saw a Robin Hood. Not sure what that last card was he drew. Storm Rage on was also an option, but gotcha. goes for the Zeus. Jake did also draw into a grab your swords this turn. So oh. Valerio doesn't know that that's in Jake's hand, but does know the rest because the Zeus was revealed to Valerio. And of course, the other cards were seen by the Ursula Deceiver. So that grab your swords is the only unknown card 
in Jake's hand for Valeria right now. Yeah, and that grab your swords can absolutely put in a lot of work. Not um, the perfect board state for it now with these two Ursa Deceivers only having one, but if this Diablo shifts into another one and then we start seeing things like Bucky, then yeah, that grab your swords can put in work. But it also begs the question, if you're only playing one or two grab your swords, how committed are you to this whole new world line? Uh, probably still, because you need to get, generate that advantage, but y this grab your swords is an important piece potentially. You're not necessarily going to want to just throw it away. So maybe Jake will look to play it before the whole new world just to get use out of it. Yep. We see Robin Hood challenge Ursula. Are we going to see Cinderella maybe finish this off? Perhaps fearing a strength of a raging fire to remove Ariel? We don't. We see the Cinderella remain readied. Tinkerbell, Beast, Tragic Hero are options in hand, as well as a smash. Now, the smash is a great way of denying the whole new world sing by Ariel. Smash, not a card you see that often as the Ursula removes the Robin Hood, perhaps just fearing that Robin Hood shift top deck. That is a huge smash play. I agree completely. And like, this is what I was saying in the previous game, Valeria putting Jake into a position where he's saying, if you want to play whole new world, you pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> you don't be singing with anything. Although Jake is only at three ink at the moment. It can go up to four this turn. So yeah, I'm not, um, oh, was that Rapunzel we just Rapunzel found? off the top. So the Cinderella could challenge yes. one of these characters. Fortunately, only going to be healing one. And the question is, does Jake even have an inkable card that is not Rapunzel? Because, of course, you're going to need to ink something in order to play that Rapunzel. The Rapunzel into the inkwell instead. It is Zeus, grab your swords, and a whole new world in hand. All uninkable songs for Jake. And not exactly any great targets for no. that Zeus right now either. Valeria with Beast and Beast in hand. So that Zeus could be an awful lot more valuable in a turn. And look at the play from Jake. I love it. Just decides to hold on to that Zeus and play absolutely nothing at all. Yeah, no, I think that's the right play there. Make Valerio commit a little bit more and try and get some use out of this Zeus and this Grab Your Sword. Just, I mean, you can't sing only one this turn anyway, but like, it just wouldn't feel great. Wants to find a singer for that, really. Are yeah. we going to see that Beast Tragic Hero come down? We do see Let the Storm Rage on. I think Valeria was probably hoping for an inkable card off the top, but deciding instead, with the fact that they drew the uninkable, to remove the Cinderella. They don't want to ink these beasts. They want to try and hold on to them as much as possible. Valeria is going to quest for two, which puts them up to six. And the final decision is, do they ink the Strength of Rage? They actually do ink the beast after all and hold on to that strength of a raging fire. Probably just wanting to remove an aerial if it comes down again, Baker. Yeah, that's one option. Plus, Valeria knows that Jake is holding the whole new world, so Beast might not be the best early play right yep. here because Jake's got to play it at some point or another. The only real question is, Jake, can Jake find a singer so that he can sing it and then still develop more cards on his turn? But you tell from the look on the face, he's not too happy with what he's holding on to here. We've got... It's still that Zeus, whole new world, grab and swords. grab your swords. The yeah. Robin Hood actually a great top deck at this moment for Jake just because it can go into the yeah, ink. well just just, any just ink will do at this moment but pass again really really fascinating this is what I mean he wants to find a singer off of this and how many cards is Valeria holding is it two or three uh, yeah, we see the beast tragic hero hit the board I think two more cards in hand Baker it's a Zeus and a strength yeah so I think at that point in the game a whole new world just played paid the hard way would have just helped Valeria way too much um, it would help Jake maybe catch up on a later turn but he wants to find a singer he, he wants to do it his way there is the Zeus that Jake's been waiting for and now an interesting decision for Jake they can play the golden harp mm -hmm. which is going to banish itself at the end of the turn if you did not play a song this turn but Jake has just played a song so this golden harp could stick around on the board and quest for two next turn the golden harp is on the board for Jake. What a fascinating card. Yeah, not seen a lot of play in the past, but the last few weeks, yep. she's been kind of coming out of the, of, the, of the cupboard a little bit, and yeah, I mean, she's a one-drop inkable that quests for two with four willpower. That is a great stat line. Yep. It's just this ability to self-banish if you don't play a song that had most players, myself included, not really believing, but hey, if you are a steel song deck and you're expecting to be playing a song every turn, she can be gas. But yeah, I really like the way Jake is playing this a lot of players would have just played the whole new world at yep. this point and would have just refreshed the hand and maybe that would work out for jake but he's a game up 
Val Valerio doesn't have much on the board that Jake has to immediately respond to. So I think it's absolutely the right decision. Take a couple of turns, try and find yourself an aerial, find yourself a Robin Hood, something that can sing it. But we do see that enchanted Diablo hitting the board. And this does put a bit more pressure on Jake. But I was just going to oh, say, there it is, the grab I was your swords. just going to say, he does have that grab your swords, which not only is going to clear the board, but provide that song that the Golden Harp needs to stay on the board. And the Golden Harp could quest for two, but instead it challenges Ursula Deceiver to remove it from the board. What a turn by Jake, clearing that enchanted Diablo. And Valerio now in a pretty interesting spot with the Ursula Deceiver. Jake's probably still hoping to sing the whole new world, taking a whole turn off for a whole new world, and then your opponent gets to play cards from the new hand first is not ideal. No. They've drawn Rapunzel, and that's not bad either, Baker. A little bit of card draw Ooh. potential. And as well as the card draw, just putting a quite big body onto the board with that five wall power and questing for two does take that one draw from the Golden Harp. Zeus has been drawn, but there isn't going to be enough ink to play it right now. Of course, Rapunzel's just entered the board and is the ink is drying on Rapunzel. She is not ready to exert to either quest, challenge, or sing. Nope. And that does mean that the Golden Harp is going to be banished for Jake at the end of the turn. But job done for the Golden Harp. We've got yeah. a couple, couple lore and also removed that Ursula Deceiver. Yeah, that one strength was important to, uh, to manage that board clear. So, yeah, it's certainly done its job. We're going to see a long came Zeus hurling that Thunderbolt at Rapunzel and removing her. Diablo coming down to take a look at Jake's hand and then just a little quest for Ursula Deceiver of all. So, yeah, not a bit of a stalemate between the players. Not a whole lot going on. Um, I think it's kind of on Jake to decide to set the tempo of this game of the whole new world because as soon as Valerio shows Bucky or something like that then Jake will just play it yep. because he'll have no choice but he wants to find a singer before then Zeus going to get rid of the Zeus to see Rabul Jake has to respect that Valerio might be playing something like Sudden Chill we haven't seen it so far in the game I don't believe but it is something that could absolutely be there and if Zeus to see Rabul double sings it then that could really hurt Jake if he loses his ability to refresh his hands so yeah good interesting game here these players both clearly know what they're doing Jake has really taken their time there. They were about to ink the Lawrence they have in hand. It's Lawrence in a whole new world. And then they just took the time to look through the discard maybe of Valeria. Maybe just exactly thinking about, do they have Sudden Chill, for example, and deciding instead to hold on to it. It's Cinderella now found, and Jake just hasn't found a, a, a five singer since that aerial got removed. The smash from Valerio, it cannot be overstated how important that was to disrupt Jake's game plan. Yeah, that was an absolutely humongous move. Jake wants to utilize either Aerial Spectacular Singer or Robin Hood, uh, maybe something else in there, but yeah, wants to be singing this whole new world. He's going to extend the Borum Sensation, Cinderella, and the Lawrence, but yeah, I agree with you completely. That smash has completely changed this game. A far sight different from game one when Jake had double Aerial, Vanessa, Cinderella, had all the singers he could yeah. possibly need. And Valerian out drawing that extra card at the start of the turn, thanks to Beast Tragic Hero. Robin Hood, Ursula Deceiver of all were the options, and Robin Hood enters the board and Ursula Deceiver of all into the inkwell. Double quest for three lore. Valerio is just five lore away and they have five lore on the board. Jake needs to remove at least one of Valerio's characters here. Yeah, no, the pressure is absolutely on. And if Jake doesn't find that Singer 5 character, is it too late now to play a whole new world and replenish your hand if you're not singing it? Because surely that Valerio just this has a huge hand and just develops enough, to, especially with that hidden yeah. cove where you could protect against the grab swords or things like that. So that's, that's my question, Joe. Do you think it's a bit late in the game now for a whole new world to make a big difference with Valerio at 15? Yeah, I think Jake's like, whole, whole plan this whole time has been hoping to draw into something which can sing it. As soon as you're spending a whole turn, your opponent's able to then develop the board. It is just a really, really slow play, which often is not going to work out in your favor, which is why we've seen Jake hold on to that whole new world the whole time. It's already one game up, is Jake. Game one, he was able to win quite decisively with a board of plenty of singers. Our Emerald Steel player wasn't able to get anything going. Very different game this time, but not the most... Uh, nothing too dramatic happening. Just Valerio's been sitting here with Ursa the Deceiver and a couple of characters just slowly trickling up while Jake desperately tries, tries to find these singers. Does do a good job of clearing up the board a little bit, just yep. remaining at that Robin Hood champion of Sherwood. Oh, finds an no. Ursa Oh, finally been discarded. Was that and the Lawrence removed by Robin Hood? 
Lawrence with damage counters is going to have zero strength. And Robin Hood is going to gain two lore for Valerio. Wow. And it's top deck mode for Jake. They need a miracle. And it's a Cinderella, oh. which is not what they need right now. And both players get a win each and three points on the board. Heartbreaking for Jake, who had such a dominant game one. But that second game, after that smash came down to remove his aerial, he just was not able.